it's time to do some chemical tests of our soil samples here. We're going to test the NPK, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium today. We'll be using our Lamott soil test kit. These are meant to be done outside in the field, so you don't need a laboratory, you don't need a kitchen, you don't really need much. Uh, but you do need to wear your gloves and you need to wear eye protection. Now I gave you a pair of gloves and I gave you a pair of uh, very nice splash goggles. Please wear both of those while we get into this kit. When you open this kit, you will find all the things you need. Everything's here. I recommend you find a table or some place to work. Indoors is fine, but outdoors is nice just in case you make a mess. And a paper towel laid down works nicely just to make sure that everything stays clean and tidy and you have all the instructions you need in a couple of different books here uh, this is information that's not necessarily related to our class but you're welcome to read through it and then we have these two books here which relate to a lot of what uh, which relate to a lot of what we talk about in our classes. This little page here is the instructions for doing the tests. So make sure you have this out and handy so that as we go through, you can follow along with the different tests. Now today we're doing nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. One thing that will be very important is make sure you don't mix up the chemicals. So each of these belongs to a specific test and there's enough test tubes in here for you to use different tubes for every test. I recommend you do one test completely all the way through and then go and clean up and set that material aside and then get your second test out and go through that completely. That way you'll never mix up different chemicals and uh, get the wrong thing put into the wrong tubes. We want to be very methodical and careful with how we do this. It's a lot of fun. It can be very meditative, but the goal here is precision. We're trying to be as precise as possible so that our results will actually be accurate. I'll demonstrate each of the three tests here and we can then go ahead and uh, show you exactly what you need to do step by step in order to get these readings of our NPK. So the first thing you want to do is pull everything out of your kit and make sure you read all the labels and that you have all the parts. And for the nitrogen test, you're going to need to open this bottle and use a knife or a pair of scissors to safely cut the wrapper off. And then we're going to want to put the white cap in its place. So let's begin the nitrogen test and I'll go through this step by step for you. You want to fill the test tube to line 7 with that nitrogen extracting solution. And technically we always fill to the bottom of the meniscus, although in this case there really isn't too much of uh, a difference. So just get it up to line 7 and notice we use the larger of the two spoons to add 0.5 grams into the test tube. We do that twice. Two scoops. And then we put the cap on the test tube. Notice I keep it in the holder just to help make sure that I don't drop or spill anything. And then you want to mix the tube gently for one minute. You'll see me fast forward some of my mixing just so I don't waste anybody's time, but try to stick to the one minute when it asks you. So then you remove the cap and you allow the soil to settle so that you'll be able to extract liquid with the pipette. Now every time you do this, use a different pipette, use a clean pipette. And we're going to transfer the clear liquid 
to a second test tube. And one way that will avoid stirring up the sediment is if you squeeze the bulb before you put it into the liquid. Release the bulb slowly to draw clear liquid into the pipette. Don't pull any soil up. You want to fill this to line three with liquid, which should be three droppers full. And then next we use the small spoon, the 0.25 gram spoon. We're going to add two measures of the nitrogen indicator powder to our soil extract in the second tube. And then make sure you put the cap back on. Now we'll put a cap on the second tube. And gently mix. Now you put it back and you wait five minutes for the pink color to develop. And this will be above the powder line. And then we hold our test tube up to the nitrogen color chart and it's easiest when you compare it against two colors. You may say it's lighter than high, it's closer to medium. It's lighter than medium, it's closer to low. But it's darker than trace and so it's somewhere between trace and low. That is an easier method than trying to compare it against all four colors at a glance. You always want to take two. And then we take a look at our indicator chart to decide uh, how many pounds per acre we have, if it's low, medium, or high. Now let's do the phosphorus test. We're going to follow very similar steps, but I recommend you clean everything up and take all the things you away that you don't need so don't have nitrogen stuff sitting out. Pull out all the phosphorus materials and follow those steps without any possible distractions. Here we fill the test tube to line six with phosphorus extracting solution. And this time we're gonna use the 0.5 G spoon in order to add three measures of soil sample. You wanna cap this and gently mix for one minute. And you want to remove the cap and allow the liquid to develop above the soil. So wait till the soil settles. And using a clean pipette, you want to transfer the clear liquid to the second clean test tube. Avoid agitating the soil. Again, squeeze that bulb before you enter the liquid. And we're filling the second test tube again to line three. So that should be three full droppers. Now we take the phosphorus indicator reagent. We're going to add six drops to the soil extract in the second tube. Now you want to cap this and we're going to gently mix it. And then we add one phosphorus test tablet. It should be white in color. Drop that in the test tube, and now we will cap it again and mix. And this time we will continue to mix until a blue color develops. And you want to make sure that that tablet is fully dissolved. It may take a little bit of time, and you may need to stop periodically to 
check and make sure it's fully dissolved. Now we hold it up to our phosphorus color chart and again you're looking at the two different colors each time and deciding if it's closer to one or the other. And then look on both sides of that uh, color and then you'll come up with whatever you think is closest. In this case I think low is closest. 0 to 50 pounds per acre but because it's not on the trace level I won't go with 0, I'll go with 50. And now let's do the potassium test. Once again I recommend you clean everything up and only have potassium out here. And if you read the instructions, there's a chance you'll need to repeat steps one through four. So I recommend just go ahead and do it twice in the beginning and you'll save yourself some extra time. So I'm filling two test tubes up to line seven with potassium extracting solution. Then I'm adding four measures of soil to each of the test tube to each of the test tubes. Now we cap these tubes and we're going to shake vigorously for one minute. Now we want to remove the caps and allow the soil to settle. Using a clean pipette, we want to transfer the clear liquid to a third test tube, a clean test tube that hasn't been used yet. Be careful not to pull up any soil. And we're trying to get this test tube up to line five which is why I recommend doing this with two test tubes to begin with so that you have enough liquid to get yourself up to line five. Now we use a potassium indicator tablet, one tablet, to uh, place that into the test tube with the soil extract. We're going to cap that. And once again, we will mix this until the tablet dissolves. And when it does, a purplish color will appear. And that purplish color should match the top square on the other chart. Check it periodically to make sure you fully dissolved the tablet. And then take a look and make sure it is, in fact, uh, the color that it should be should be purple in color. And then we're going to add the potassium test solution two drops at a time. But if you look at the, uh, the color chart, you'll see that from zero to eight drops is a very high potassium level. So I just go ahead and add eight drops in the very beginning and check that to make sure my color hasn't changed. The more drops we add, the lower our potassium level. And now we'll add drops two at a time so that we can uh, see and wait for it to change colors. So here we're at 12 drops. It's still purple. 14 drops. And it's looking like it's beginning to change colors. I can see some blue in there. But when I hold it up, it's still closer to purple than to the light blue. So I've decided to give one more. And I'll do two more drops because you always add two at a time. So now I'm to 16 drops, which would put me at medium low. Now I can see, yes, it's closer to that bottom square. and medium low would put me around 120 pounds per acre.